Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. So this, again, this is going to be a completely different setup than we had with the first couple segments of this paint along. Just because as I mentioned in yesterday's video, there were some technical issues with the multiple camera angles. So um, in any case, let me just list out the colors for you. So we have titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin permanent, cadmium, red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black. And if you want to know, exactly what materials I'm using. You can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box below and it'll all be typed out for you. First thing I'm gonna do is apply a little bit of my medium, that is Neo McGilp medium to the areas of the painting that I'm going to be working on today. So I'm thinking I'm going to stick with um, just the face and perhaps the neck. The rest of the painting doesn't really bother me that much. It's just that the, um, you know, the main focal point, the face. Yeah, if you're following along with me at this point and, and you want to know how to move the face, uh, how to develop the face further, this is going to be the video for you. So uh, this is gonna be another one of those, I seem to say this a lot, but this is gonna be another one of those uh, laid back, have a, have a cup of tea kind of days. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up the flesh tone colors uh, that we usually use for the portrait and um, I'm going to start off with a very light light so we're going to get into the titanium white and yellow ochre and if you're new to flesh tones titanium white and yellow ochre actually gives you a really nice highlight color so titanium white yellow ochre now remember um, the the setup is a little bit different and even the lighting is a little bit different. It's set so that the light isn't as uh, strong onto my eyes. Like I said, I was having some uh, discomfort with my eyes recently. So again, I apologize if the lighting isn't as good as it was before. It's just that the lighting is uh, not towards my eyes anymore. So again, you're seeing on the top left corner of your screen, it's a much larger rectangle than uh, my older portrait painting video. So again, this is intended for you to paint and follow along with me. I won't be able to have the uh, side by side because that requires me to have multiple cameras uh, so that you can see the palette. But in any case, what I just made here was a combination of alizarin permanent cadmium red medium and the brush still has the same colors that we had for this. So now this on its own is a little bit too red so we can go with a couple options. We can use burnt umber, sap green or basically any of these cooler colors to neutralize the heat of this. So um, usually I'll jump into sap but I think I'll use burnt umber. Just a tiny bit of burnt umber. See how just a little bit of burnt umber, it really does the trick with uh, not, I don't know, with uh, making this less hot, bringing down the heat. So now we're moving into the middle tone value. So now I'm going to be switching into flake white. And again, you don't have to use flake white. Um, if you don't want to use flake white, here's what you can do. Uh, you can use just a tiny, just a tiniest bit of titanium white. So flake white, remember flake white has the property. Uh, of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much, therefore giving your paint a much uh, heavier body, which is something that uh, most of us really like. And I didn't use flake white in the beginning just because I thought that this was going to be a uh, ala prima, just one sitting kind of thing. But as you know, it turned out to be multiple sittings. But anyway, I like to use flake white when I'm building the, uh, the layers up. So now, as you've noticed, I'm just bouncing back and forth between the alizarin permanent and the sap green. So just bouncing back between alizarin permanent and sap green. And now the flesh tones are going to get much darker. So we're going to go into the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue, alizarin permanent. And then as, as it gets super dark, we're going to go right into the ivory black and alizarin permanent. Super simple. And I almost feel lost these days without this. I really like to have these uh, mixtures all uh, mapped out for me, at least so I know where I am in terms of the overall value scale. So now we're at five minutes uh, with the video clip, uh, just about. So now we can go ahead and jump into the painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get 
a little bit of my um, my thinner, my uh, odorless mineral spirits that I'm using for today, and uh, just a little bit onto my brush and into the burnt umber. And this is going to serve as a drawing brush just to correct any kind of minor drawing issues or major drawing issues, whichever. Um, I'm going to look at, I'm going to have to look at the reference for a little bit in order to know exactly what changes or corrections I want to make. Um, and I think there's some discrepancy here and I think it's just because I need a little bottom portion for the uh, lower eyelid, but I don't really think I need an outline for that. So let's just, eh, with the small brush, let's just get into this this little value range. Now remember that my camera is at an angle with respect to the canvas. The camera is at this kind of angle. And it's angled this way because I'm painting with my right hand and I don't want to block too much of the footage, but just know that the camera is going to be at an angle. So I think there's gonna be a tiny bit of the uh, other eyelid showing over here. So this right there. And tell you what, to support my hand, I'm going to use this little uh, selfie stick that I use as a, what's referred to as a mall stick. Just to kind of put this little edge here. So there's going to be um, a little bit of a challenge showing that little area of the eye. So I'm going to take this same brush that I used for all of this, I'm going to add a little bit of titanium white. Maybe I just added too much, but oh well. So the titanium white and the ivory black with a little bit of the flesh tone. And uh, some of you may know what I'm going to use this color for. And if you don't, if you don't know, it is for the sclera. The sclera is the white of the eye, which we know is not white. But there's going to be just a little touch. I mean, just the tiniest, but that is a way, way too light. So ivory black and some of this color from down here. Let's see if we can salvage that. Actually, you know what? What we should do is just get rid of that first. So let's use a clean bristle brush. Just kind of subtract a little bit there. Let's put this back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get a very dark value with the same brush. Just ivory black burnt umber. A little bit of a lizard permanent just to make sure we don't have something that's too dark. And we're going to go right into here. So it still needs to get a little darker. So a little bit of a lizard permanent and ivory black. It's looking a little bit better. Now the thing is, it's never going to be perfect. And with a portrait, you really want to, uh, you want to think about what the painting looks like without the model. So what does it look like without the model? So without the model, it could be that this angle is just a little bit too sharp. So again, I'm going to go into this darker shape. I'm going to move this up. So without the model, this eye looked like it was just too much, too much. And it could also be a little bit of photographic distortion, uh, not to blame the camera, but uh, photogra photographs of people tend to over exaggerate the angles of the features. So it could be a little bit of a photographic distortion for this eye. So if you're following along with me at home, beware of this angle. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of a lighter flesh tone, or should I say darker flesh tone. Go right into here. And so today is really going to be about, uh, I, I think maybe today will be the ending of this paint along. Now I won't be able to show you every single clip, 
uh, just because I'm gonna I'm realizing that this takes much longer than I thought. So I'm gonna show you everything and everything that is completely necessary. I'll try to cut out some of the noodling. So noodling is a term that I heard back when I was at a studio in Kaminati. Um, noodling is a term where you put something in and it doesn't really need to be there and then you take it out and you kind of just wasted some time and it's okay. I mean, that kind of stuff happens. Remember, portrait painting is a very back and forth this kind of thing. Painting in general is a very back, back and forth-ish kind of thing. So now that we have that shape there, now let's go into the shadow color. Let's just get whatever. Let's just get some of this. Let's kind of push that dark shape into there. It's going to be a little bit of a transition here. So the next thing I'm going to notice is this, the uh, peak of convexity for the eye. Uh, it's a little too far to the right. It could go to the left a little bit relative to your screen. So ivory black and a lizard permanent. Let's go ahead and put that darker shape and move that angle a little bit. Uh, so those of you that are new to oil painting and you want to know why on earth I apply the layer of uh, my medium onto the surface before painting, uh, it does a couple things. One of the most important things is that it makes it feel like I'm painting wet on the wet. So it allows the canvas to be a little bit more slick, which allows the brush to move with a little more facility onto the canvas. So a little bit darker right into here. And it has a little bit of heat. So it has a little bit of the alizarin permanent into it. And again, there's still, still going to be more of an angle right into there. But we have to be careful with our edges. We don't want the same edge to quality to be displayed throughout the entire surface. So I think that I'm just going to very carefully just soften that shape a little bit and that's it. So a little bit of ivory black and the alizarin permanent. Ivory black, alizarin permanent, just to get a nice and clean dark value. And now with this clean and dark value, I'm gonna put in much more of a dark shape into here. And I will say uh, my eyes feel a little better uh, that I now that I haven't really had my uh, um, lights facing too close to me and the fact that I haven't really been working from photo reference that long so right now what I'm actually doing is I'm working instead from my instead of my TV screen I have my laptop off to the side um, which I don't know for better or for worse but it's a it's a little easier on my eyes I think but in any case, let's get back to the painting, huh? So right here, the dark of the nostril, like I said before, wasn't as important before, but now it is going to be important. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my medium, the Neo McGill, just off to the side. And we're gonna go right into this, add a little bit more of the same color combination. And again, if you're new to painting and you're wondering how on earth uh, could I possibly use so much paint on my palette, all of these colors just came right out of my freezer. So when I'm done with a painting session, all I do is I get my uh, paints, scoop them up or just keep them on this piece of glass and just put the piece of glass in my freezer and it'll be there and it will not dry, except for this guy right here. The burnt umber loves to dry very quickly so I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this color. A little bit more of the dark for the uh, nostril. And while we're at it, while we're at it, same brush, same color, let's just get into this. And let's just go ahead and put in the little dark shape for the, uh, what is this thing? Nose ring? I think that's what it is for the nose ring. 
a little bit of titanium white. Jewelry is this simple. Just maybe two or three brush strokes and you can easily get the effect of jewelry. So no worries there. See that? Super, super simple. So now I have to pick and choose my battles here. So I can go into the ear and then further refine the ear, but you know the ear isn't really bothering me. What's bothering me is the structure in this area. <clears throat> so again, those of you following along with me at home and uh, those of you that are following along and have made it to this portion of the painting and then you're wondering, hmm, something's going on there. And really, it, it's all down to the values. So I'm going to put the little brush aside and I'm going to get a larger brush, still not a very massive brush. But now we're going to very carefully observe uh, these shapes of value, starting off here with the uh, cheekbone, zygomatic bone, right into here. So we're going to add a little bit more cadmium, red medium. And if, if I sound much more relaxed today uh, than when I had the multiple camera angles, <laughs> it's because I am. I don't have to worry about um, one of my cameras dying on me or something because my camera is right next to my head. So um, I'm able to look at the viewfinder and know that I'm not losing any footage. So those of you uh, that are following along with me and didn't watch yesterday's video, it's okay. Just know that um, there were some significant technical issues. I did end up losing um, some footage of this painting, which honestly, I've never been so upset. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm being real with you. I was super upset yesterday. I lost a segment of footage and then I realized uh, why am I why am I working so hard on the computer? I need to be here on the uh, um, right here in front of the painting creating these paintings in the future I want to have a camera crew with me to to deal with that um, And me I, I want to be here painting creating these videos for you. So wish me luck Anyway, so we're pushing this light plane. Now this whole, this whole thing is a plane and we've pushed it again a little bit brighter, but not just that, we've flattened out this shape. And now we're gonna darken over here just a little bit, just a little bit. So as we move across towards that area, uh, we're gonna change brushes here. We're gonna have a darker half tone brush. So this is a clean and dry brush. And we're gonna just kind of merge these values into one another. So I want this to be very close to this, yet still darker because that plane is angling away from the light. Now remember subtlety, subtlety comes from how close you can get the values to one another, yet maintain their differentiation. So that's how we're achieving um, subtlety into that area. And another thing I'm going to notice is, um, I don't know if it's the photo reference. I think it's the photo reference. This whole area looks flat, just like, uh, I don't know, just too, too flat in value to me. So what I'm going to do is, uh, Let's get a little bit of a lighter shape and let's conceptualize the form a little bit. Let's conceptualize the form a little bit. So right underneath the tear duct, there's going to be a little bit of a plane here right next to the side. Plane of the nose right around here. A little pathway that goes right off to over here. And um, it should be, it should be receiving much more light. Of course, you can see that highlight there in the photo reference, but all of this is flattened out in the photograph, at least for me. And again, I'm working from a computer screen just because when you, when you take a photo reference, you're distorting nature a little bit, but when you take a photo reference and then you print it, you're distorting it much more. And uh, I've just been kind of trained or taught in the past that 
uh, when you print it out, the distortion is much worse than when you're looking at a computer monitor. I don't know how to prove that. That's just something I've been told. So that's merely conjecture since I can't really prove it. Well, I don't know how to prove it. So again, this is going to be a little bit lighter. So all that means is that I lighten this relative to this. This is darker than this. This looks the same as this on the photo reference, but it's not. So we might be approaching the kind of uh, noodling thing that I was talking about. So I may go back and forth between certain shapes and not really make any progress, but I'm going to edit it so that you see only the progress. And I'll, of course, I'll show you some of the uh, mistakes just because, you know, I like to show you as much of the process as possible. Just know that um, this area now in the painting, uh, there's going to be a lot of time spent uh, studying these values. So um, what do you say? Right around here, the, the gradation is going to be much more vast. So I'm going to get a larger clean brush. Uh, it's a little bit larger than this one that I was using for that area. So I'm going to put this little brush away and I'm going to get a darker value and let's, let's mix that value up. I'm going to stay away from burnt umber just because I know that burnt umber is going to start to dry on me and uh, that's not something that I want. So sap green, alizarin permanent into this darker region of the palette. And again, it's really hard to pinpoint what the color is from the photo reference. So I'm going to go with my, my guess that it's going to be something like this. And again, there's going to be a significant drop off in value here. And I'm still letting the layer underneath show through. Just because I like that look. So first we over darken it. So first it's going to look a little bit over modeled. Over modeling means just darkening something just like this. So now first we're going to over model, meaning we're going to make it a little bit too dark. And then we're going to introduce the subtlety into it. So now what I'm going to do is a little bit of cadmium red into this region of the palette, just so I get kind of a nicer uh, warm mid-tone. And we're gonna just merge these forms into one another. And again, this is gonna be a very back and forth-ish kind of thing. Some more cadmium red right into here. And again, it's going to be really hard to see this on the photo reference, these values. So conceptually, I know that this shape is getting much darker. Well, not much darker, but it's getting darker, just not getting that much darker. How about that? Very subtle. This is one of the most subtle areas in most portraits this little area right here, because this plane is turning away from the light, but it then it approaches the light once again here, but it's very, very subtle and usually it's cooler. So some sap green should do the trick. See how we're very lightly kind of sketching the paint onto the surface. And then a little darker here. Very, very subtle. Super subtle. How about that uh, brush we used for this area here? And let's just work out this edge. It's going to have to be much softer. And while we're doing that, let's get the lighter brush. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, so the lighter brush is kind of tainted. 
has kind of a darker shape now, so let's tell you what. I'm gonna look for another brush. There we go. So this is another brush, clean brush. And we're gonna put in a lighter shape here because it kind of needs it. And over here. And it's not straight white, even though on the screen, on your computer screen, it might look straight white. But remember, it was titanium white with yellow ochre. Pushing that much lighter. Now then, with this light brush, again, I'm gonna look at this highlight push it a little more. And again, I'm very careful not to make it too light because again, the photo reference is most likely pushing that light too bright. So now I'm noticing that there's an even more defined uh, ray of light over here. And this is basically just a lighter plane. And again, this color is no more complicated than what you saw me mix in the beginning which was the titanium white and the yellow ochre. Titanium white on its own is kind of a coolant, so I'm not worried about it being too warm. Although uh, the light the light that I'm using here uh, is, I'm noticing, much warmer than I had before, so I guess that's something I have to take into account. That is the actual, the physical light in my studio. A little more light over here. Super simple. And again, there's still, still, still a brighter light right there. So let's just make it not as light and put in this, this light plane over here. And, and then the next area that's gonna get darker. And again, I'm putting all these lights relative to this because I, I need to have some lights to relate to the dark. So the next area to reassess is here. Again, there's a really, really broad value range to oil paint. So we can get really close to the titanium white value now over here, super close, but still. It's not the lightest light. And then right over here, see that? That's gonna be one step darker over here than it is there. Barely, barely noticeable though. Now then, I think that the next area to look at is going to be uh, probably down here. This is gonna taper off down here. And we're gonna let the paint just kind of mix into the color that we laid down earlier today. Right into there. No problem whatsoever. Now it's really starting to glow and it might be too bright. Um, so I may have to bring those highlights down later on, but let's just go ahead and um, make this plane a little bit brighter. So I'm using some of the warmer tones right off the palette. So just using some of those warmer tones, just pushing that light a little bit. Now, the next thing I, I'm assuming that I should look at is going to be um, kind of the, the merging from this plane into this plane here. So again, I have to really pick and choose my battles here. Um, squinting down, it's very complicated to see what's going on here. This is a very troublesome area for me. So I think what it could be is that um, maybe it's this plane that needs to come out a little bit further. And again, this is kind of noodling, so I may, I don't know if I'm gonna cut this part of the video out. So remember noodling is when you're doing the same thing or you're just kind of going back and forth, back and forth until you finally figure out what brush stroke needed to go exactly where.
So again, let's get into that half tone brush and follow all along this shape. It's gonna get darker here, but very subtle, very subtle. You don't wanna overdo this area. The photograph is definitely not doing justice to this shape and I know it's not. So I have to be very, very subtle with these values and with the temperatures. I'm gonna have to adjust the entire temperature of this area. It's just way too, um, too hot. And then here too, I'm gonna have to cool those highlights down. pushing that plane up a little bit. So let, let's do that. I'm gonna cool this plane down a little bit. So I'm gonna use the ultramarine blue and the titanium white. Get a really nice cool color. And this on its own is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna let it just mix right into the uh, color that I have already placed down. So a lot of titanium white. I might need even more titanium white because without it, it's gonna look like a bruise. I'm actually using my mineral spirits on the bottom here just to clean this off. So more titanium white. I have to be very careful with that value. If it's too dark in that area, it's going to look like a bruise. So I have to be very, very careful. Now then again, I'm going to have to reassess the color family uh, for the cheekbones. So again, this was a nice start in terms of the value, but now the color is gonna to need to be studied a little further. So it's gonna to need to get a little bit cooler. So we're gonna go for the sap green, yellow ochre, titanium white mixture in this area. And this video might end up being much longer uh, than the, uh, the first paint alongs, depending on how I edit it. A little bit more titanium white. Let's use flake white. Yellow ochre. Let's see how this color does. It's a little better. Now, I don't think that there's any such thing as an ugly color or a muddy color. I think that it just depends on how you relate the colors to one another. So if you're worried about mixing up a muddy color on your portrait, it's not that you're gonna mix up a literal color of mud, it's just that the uh, values and the colors need to work in relation to one another. So in, for instance, this area is much cooler now than it was before, but it's not at all anywhere near as cool as say the background color. So I'm making it lighter, a little bit cooler, and then a little bit um, more subtle now. So let's just get the paint that's already on here. Let's see if we can, nope, nope, nope. It needs to be warmer. There we go, and to here, see how very subtle 
how very quiet these transitions are. And again, this really is about slowing down and observing the shapes. <laughs> 